let's go into just a relationship that you had obviously um, a deep connection with George at the time, but, but you two are swimming similar events, doing similar, you know, doing the same things and, and, and talent wise, probably, probably similar talents. I mean, you're an extremely gifted athlete. He is as well. You're competing in similar events. Uh, at the time I had, you know, Aaron Charla, who we, we were both 50 freestylers and, and we we're both very similar in that sense, but we're both shooting for the same thing. How do you make that work on a team? So that's, that's the challenge, right? When you've got a bunch of rock stars and, and insanely talented individuals who are competing against each other, but at the same time working towards the same goal, um, that's part of the, the, I think, genius of David is getting everyone to not only work individually to be better, but then put that individual effort towards the team. And, and for me and George, you know, I came out of high school as, as the number one 400 IM recruit. And, mm -hmm. and he came out as, I, I, I'm assuming he's the number one 200 IM recruit. Mm -hmm. And I still had a really damn good 200 IM. And George was light years ahead of me. So I would say for me, and, and especially seeing George, you know, my freshman year, I went from being, you know, a big fish in a small pond to a tiny fish in a huge pond. Mm. And, and it, was, it was a humbling experience, probably my first truly humbling experience um, in, in seeing George not only excel freshman year, but again, like I said, win, uh, where, you know, I only final, finaled in one event at NCAAs my, my senior year. So I think for me, it was, it was not only looking at George as a competitor, but, but more as someone to go chase. I mean, I, I again, I, especially freshman year, I wouldn't even put it on the same page, right? He, he was way ahead of me. Um, but then uh, sophomore year rolls around and, um, that's when I really, yeah, that was probably possibly the best year of swimming I ever had and, um, capped off by probably the biggest disappointment I ever had, which is ironic, but that sophomore year is, is really when I started to, to compete with George Now I didn't beat him in the 200 IM, especially at NCAAs, he ended up breaking the world record uh, short course meters that year in, in the 200 IM, if I remember correctly, but, um, you know, was in his league and was able to compete with him. And that elevated my game to then, you know, put me in a position to go after making my first Olympic team in, in 2004. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't think George and I ever had an unhealthy competition because, you know, he was more of the 200 IM guy and down. I was the 200 IM guy and up. So where he, he had, and especially later on in that, um, in, in that, in our careers, um, and he's a sprinter and moved towards being an, an incredible world-class 50 freestyler. And mm -hmm. I moved into breaststroke. So I don't think it was, I think that relationship was never uh it was never unhealthy competition by any means and it wasn't as direct as some of my other relationships ended up being um later on in my career i heard it got a little contentious to tell me if this story is accurate you had you missed the uh olympics uh in 2004 i think you finished third in the 200 im and the story is that i hear your time would have won you a medal at the olympics is that correct yeah, so that was that. That's kind of what I was referring to earlier in terms of, you know, 2004. Like I said, probably one of the best years in swimming I ever had. Capped off with two third place finishes at Olympic trials in the 200 IM and the 400 IM. 200 IM by two tenths of a second. Hmm. 400 IM by by four tenths of a second. And again, the the kind of the dumping salt on the wound was six weeks later watching Michael and Ryan in the, the 200 IM and Michael and Eric Vent in the 400 IM go on to Athens and win gold and silver, mm. right? And, and George won a bronze in, in the 200 IM. And the times that they went uh, were faster than what I did at trials, but weren't in the ballpark of me not getting or competing for a medal. So I'm mm. not saying I would have automatically won a medal, obviously, but, mm -hmm. you know, I was competing for a medal at those Olympic games had I been able to go. So, you know, looking at it from a point of contention, no, I mean, George, you know, represented a different country and that was not something that I ever was upset by. There's, you know, 
countless numbers of athletes that come here to train and, and then represent different countries. So um, it was more just a frustration that, oh my gosh, I'm one of the best swimmers in the world and, uh, and I can't compete on the biggest stage in the world. 